It was because of the DVDs that my father saved of Sean Connery and Roger Moore's James Bond filmography that I got obsessed with the franchise. While it represented at that point of time what a capable gentleman represented, the campy pitch, the mission at hand, the villain-like tropes, and the world associated with 00 agents created by Ian Fleming was something that I got absolutely consumed by. As I grew up, I was subjected to watching Pierce Brosnan as my generation's James Bond, but never felt really connected to his portrayal of the iconic character. The dependency of technology, not getting his hands dirty, and the overall treatment of the films discouraged me from caring any more about the franchise. I distinctly remember when it was announced that a new actor would feature in the coming Bond films, piquing my interest. Daniel Craig at that point of time was relatively a niche actor. I remember articles written how it was such a miscast and that he doesn't have the traits required for the series. Considering him to be short, rustic, and not traditionally good looking, imagine. Words which were quickly retracted as Craig provided probably the most grounded and badass action-oriented portrayal of James Bond. Jeremy Johns rightly pointed out about how that time itself represented where portrayals of iconic characters were in the hands of sensible creators like Nolan, who did Batman, who provided a human approach to the characters, which strayed away from the over-the-top nature of the classic films, and hence, seeing Craig in the opening sequence of Casino Royale made me instantly obsessed with his list of Bond films, the rankings of which we will come in the conclusion. It's actually one of the main reasons, jokingly, cinema enthusiasts consider Craig's Bond films to be an extension of the Bond series, at least in treatment. Before No Time to Die commences, we saw Bond help in capturing Blofeld, ending the possibilities of the Spectre and Nine Eyes project coming into fruition, and finally, in his Aston Martin DB5 drive away with Swan. What transpires after them leaving, as we saw in the trailer, is that they get surrounded and attacked, bringing doubts in Bond's mind about the affiliations of Swan and whether he has been backstabbed again, only to unravel another mischievous game plan to cause havoc in the world, this time led by Safin, played by Rami Malik, who has an origin story deeply connected to the characters of this world. How did Daniel Craig's final Bond film fare? 15 years of Daniel Craig ending with this film. The MGM lion roaring, the Monty Norman's iconic background score kicking in. It's a rather emotional event. Tell me though, why did you, if you did, love Craig's portrayal of Bond? And how different do you think it is from what we've previously seen? Moving on, here's me telling you the good and bad aspects of No Time to Die so that you guys can ultimately decide whether to watch it in select theatres or not. The Underwhelming Aspects Length I was absolutely hooked for the first half of the film. We are Indian, so we have an awful habit of segregating films into how two halves execute their screenplay because our films are designed to have an interval. From that perspective, I have to say that you only feel a sense of lethargy momentarily in the second half. While the plan that is to be executed will cause carnage in the world is commencing, the double-O agents curating their plan and the ways to curtail this monstrosity is the only part where you could nitpick what could have been edited. This is not in any way very obvious, but this can be debated as No Time to Die is the long longest Bond film in history. Missed opportunity and personal take. I absolutely fell in love with Anna de Armas' character in the film that can be best described as a cameo. She gets her hands dirty while channelizing her inner Ronda Rousey from Furious 7, basically kicking ass in a dress. The missed opportunity that I feel is that she could have featured further in the film as it was definitely a lot of fun when she came on screen and joined hands with Bond. While the relationship between Bond and Swan is more or less the core of No Time to Die, for no fault of the actors, there is something shared between Vesper and Bond from Casino Royale that still holds a special place in my heart. It's not that Swan and Bond don't have something that holds the film together, but you have your favourites. And mine in this entire filmography of Daniel Craig films, Evergreen just hits it right in the sweet spot. The Antagonist this one is going to be a rather contentious opinion, but here we go. Rami Malik is a phenomenal actor. He has chameleon-like traits and gets into the skin of Safin really well for this film. But what I felt was that the mission that is being executed is far more compelling than the individual himself. Again, this is no fault of the actor, but when I think about antagonists in modern history, at least in Craig's filmography as Bond, when I think about individuals that developed fear in me or intimidated me, Mads Mikkelsen as Le Chiffre in Casino Royale and Javier Bardem as Raul Silva from Skyfall definitely rank above in terms of how the antagonists were written.
the good cinematography and the action sequences the action sequences and the way they have been captured is absolutely spectacular in this film i can't say this enough but it would be criminal to watch this film on a laptop as it can be truly termed as a cinematic film linus sangren really has made for an immersive experience at least when it comes to sequences of combat several moments come to my mind as i watch the film the bridge sequence snippets of which you have already seen in the trailer are to marvel at followed by an extremely skilled chase sequence on a motorbike there is this great scene also that could have come across as gimmicky with magnets and a free fall that is so cool and finally a really detailed sequence that takes place in a forest as bond is surrounded by enemies that will really engage you chatter does not take center stage i can't do a review and not mention what the internet has been obsessed about since the details of this film came out with the presence of another double o agent in the form of nomi played by lashana lynch came into fruition it almost took center stage rather than it being about craig's last outing as bond What's refreshing about the film is that Nomi's character does not become the core focus of the film which could have definitely taken away from what this film meant. She is a confident and capable presence in the film that is instructed to coexist with Bond returning. But there is always an ego battle between both of them which actually works really well for the film. Imagine it to be Ronaldo and Mbappe being in the same team. Both think that they are equally skilled but one has the experience and the other fully thinks that they can fill the legend shoes easily. This is a Daniel Craig Bond film and I love that even though Twitter would want him to become absolutely antiquated with his purpose. It is not the case with this Bond film. The supporting cast. What's lovely when it comes to a film like the James Bond series is that he is an individual that is trained not to trust anybody, and in this process, long-term relationships are tough to keep. While I absolutely miss Judi Dench's M at the helm of affairs, someone that Bond could really trust implicitly, I love the relationship that developed between Bond and Money Penny and Q. These are not your generic sidekicks but actually lend great personality to the film and provide a snippet of the much guarded personality of Bond. Both Naomi Harris and Ben Whishaw contribute a personal touch to their characters rather than coming across as a part of the supporting cast that could have easily been forgotten. Christoph Waltz's Blofeld is also extremely enjoyable, making me think that he just has a ball doing these sinister roles. Daniel Craig I'm going to say it with chest with no shame whatsoever Daniel Craig according to me is the greatest of all time when it comes to the portrayal of James Bond over the years There was a statement that I absolutely disagree with which said that Craig had become bigger than Bond in contrast I actually feel he provided a dimension to the character that was much needed in the 21st century a take off the character who actually questions his self worth belief and purpose in the world finally making a character that was charming but at a distance from us just more human I have never seen a Craig Bond film and felt his portrayal was cheesy or uncomfortable understated with his humor and effective with his actions he is my greatest of all time 100% and I genuinely feel no time to die was a great send off to an actor that has given his all to this role if i was put under pressure to create a tier list regarding craig's filmography as bond i would say number 1 would definitely still be casino royale number 2 would be skyfall 3 would be no time to die 4 would be spectre and finally last would be quantum of solace if you can't agree with my last position then we can't be friends but you also let me know what are your rankings of his filmography it's au revoir for now craig thank you for the memories and that was a video guys write it down in the comments below what you thought about the movie please don't forget to follow me on instagram the handles are in front of you follow me at jammy pants for also please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead thank you for watching